So one of the newer cons, well, not consoles, but video game platforms that came out this year, or at least this end of the year, is Amazon Luna, which is their streaming service, uh, similar to Google Stadia, Microsoft X Cloud, PlayStation Now, that kind of thing. And even though the Luna service uh, lets you use any USB controller to control it, or even Bluetooth if you're on a mobile platform, they released a controller of their own. And unlike the Stadia controller, it can actually be used as a controller for uh, whatever uh, on your PC if you plug it in using the USB. So just want to do a quick comparison here because uh, I think with the Xbox 360 especially, or arguably the original Xbox's controller S, you could say that Microsoft codified the universal style of a video game controller in the modern era with the offset sticks, but then really the ergonomics and shape and layout of a video game controller. Uh, and then the a lot of people would say that the Stadia controller looks a bit generic, but when I first saw this uh, Luna controller, the two-tone plastic, where the grips really stand out, really called to mind the Switch Pro controller, right? But then also just the general shape and layout uh, reminded me of the second generation uh, Xbox One controller. So I took it out of the box and it does feel different. Uh, I can't necessarily say better or worse than a lot of the other controllers, but it definitely feels different. So starting off, the D-pad is really clicky, but then the sound is sound is more dull than a lot of the other controllers. It feels like it has immediately responsive uh, tactility, so you don't really have to press down very much before you feel that the switch is making contact. So the Xbox and Luna controllers, the D-pads, feel very similar. Whereas even though the Stadia controller has a hard click, you really do feel like you push down, I would say, 20, 30 percent further before it makes contact. And then the switch controller is uh, similarly far throw. Although the tension that you feel, it feels like you immediately have a level of pushback or uh, or resistance versus here on the Stadia controller, it feels like you can move a bit, like it's really wobbly before it settles in on top of the uh, uh, whatever mechanism it's sitting on before it makes contact. The buttons feel like they're on membranes. They're pretty deep throw and they really follow the curvature of the controller. Uh, they are flat top. They do have curvature on the edges, but they are flat top. And personally, for me, I prefer a flat face button for a lot of action games and pressing it repeatedly. Uh, even though the Xbox controller is my preferred controller over, say, the uh, DualShock controllers, the domes, the convex domes of the controller can really dig into my thumb if I'm really pressing it hard, playing like an action game like Devil May Cry or Bayonet or that kind of thing. Uh, again, feels like the throw on Stadia controller is really deep, uh, but it's got a flat face. And the Nintendo controller, similar to the D-pad, you feel the resistance immediately, so it doesn't feel like there's a dead zone, I guess you could say, before your push starts uh, being recognized. But their uh, buttons are enormous compared to the size of the, uh, I guess it doesn't really come off on the camera, but you really look at it. The sizes of these buttons are larger than on the other controllers. When I first got the 
this into my hands, I felt like the analog sticks were identical to the Xbox Ones because they've got this divot, this concave divot in the center where you can really nestle the uh, tips of your fingers so that you can push it around. And then the texture on the ring here was very Xboxy. But when I put them side by side, they're actually a little different. So the depth of the, uh, the hat, I guess you could say, this rubber hat, is thinner than on the Xbox One. Uh, I can't angle these so they uh, look great together. But yeah, I thought they were identical because there's a lot similar, but they actually are different. Uh, sorry for the grubbiness here. But even on the ring, you can see that the flat portion of the ring around the edge is a bit wider than on the Xbox version. Shoulder buttons, this is where there's a bit of play, squishiness, but you get tactility and you can, similar to the Xbox controller, push down with like the middle uh, knuckle of your hand so that you don't have to actually move your fingertips. So it rotates around this part of the shoulder downward and you can comfortably press that. I'm not really fond of the throw of this. It feels pretty shallow compared to the range of an Xbox One controller. However, the, the uh, sculpt of it is such that when you get to the bottom, uh, the edge here is flush with the sculpt of the grip of the controller. Unlike the Xbox One, where you can see, look at this, uh, this line here, as it goes all the way down, it actually sinks below the edge. So it feels a bit weird sometimes as you're squeezing the triggers. So let's see, the range, I would say, there's maybe like 20% less range here on the Luna controller, but it's got a nice concave uh, lip here so that as you're squeezing down, your finger can't slip off. It's got a uh, consistent resistance across its whole range. These other buttons are tiny little micro switches and they're very clicky. I'm not particularly fond of, uh, I forgot what they call this button, but they don't call it the options button. Uh, it seems like its articulating point is actually inset a little towards the center because when you press it, it doesn't press directly down. feels like it levers down like this from this point. So depending on how you put your finger on it, you'll feel... it feels a little unnatural. Whereas this regular hamburger menu button, the start button, feels like it's just direct down. This light, I'll insert a video here, but it's really nice. It seems like there's eight LEDs uh, in this ring. So when it's doing the sinking motion, uh, maybe I'll do that. Come on, turn on. Look at that ring. That is a smooth ring. Oh no, it's turned on. I don't know what's connected to. Let's turn that off. does a very strong rumble. The rumble on here is super strong. Uh, I would say stronger than the DualShock or uh, Xbox or even the Nintendo one. So let's see, what else we got here? The top, it's very basic. You've got a USB-C charger. This is for both, uh, well, I don't know that's rechargeable because it requires double A's, but you can use this to connect to your uh, PC through USB-C. And uh, let's see, we'll could do comparisons here at the top. So there's no sync button on this. In order to sync the Luna, what you do is you hold down whatever this button's called and X for a few seconds, unless you're connecting to the app, in which case you just hold this down and it'll go directly into pairing mode. Here's a microphone. Uh, here's a uh, combination headphone and uh, mic jack. So that's becoming standard these days, of course, except for the Nintendo one. The, uh, let's see, the Luna. So smooth up here, 
slightly rougher texture here, but then the bottom has this stipling, sort of this uh, braille-ish pattern that leads a, lends a really good grip to it to really nestle it into your hands. I would say that the wings on the Luna controller are a bit thinner than the wings on an Xbox One controller. So uh, depending on the size of your hands, it could fit better or worse than here. But I like some fatness in the wings here just so that it, uh, I don't have to squeeze my hands as much because over time, you know, you can get repetitive stress injury if if you're tightening your hand too much. The uh, Stadia controller feels like it's somewhere in the middle with the thickness. I would say the wing feel is sort of similar to the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, both of these controllers are sort of on the uh, narrower side, I would say, on the wing thickness. So you've got a back here that's very similar to the Microsoft version. and But one thing that I noticed that I didn't really like, uh, so let's open this up. Uh, well, this is nice. So it's got a little rubber pad here to help the battery step in, but you'll notice here there's this little divot uh, at the top here. And this is really necessary because this battery compartment is tight, tight, tight. So it comes with Amazon non-rechargeable batteries. I'm just using Antelope because of course, that's what I've got. And there's a battery compartment. Uh, they haven't said anything about making, ooh, that's, that's tight. They haven't said anything about making a rechargeable battery packs for this, and I don't know that it'll ever come to that. But I definitely like the width of the Microsoft one because it's just easy to pop in and out. You'll see that the Microsoft controller also has this little notch to let you get your finger under here, but uh, it's very critical for that thing to exist on the... Amazon Luna controller. So similar to the Stadia controller, it can connect directly to the service by connecting to your Wi-Fi access point. So while this has Bluetooth connectivity to connect to your Android or Apple devices, uh, the preferred way is to do a direct data connection to the Amazon server. So in the pairing uh, app on your phone or uh, iPad, is there one on iPad? I'm not sure, but uh, you uh, can program your Wi-Fi into this so it'll connect directly. And so it'll send the data packets through there instead of through your device and then from your device to the data center to reduce latency. And when I was playing this through things like uh, grid and control and uh, R-type and other games that are on the service, uh, I didn't really feel any problems with the input latency here. That's really good. Uh, so this isn't really reviewing anything about the services themselves, especially the streaming services, just looking at the controller. I think it's a solid controller. My uh, only real complaint is the throw of the triggers. I wish that it had a greater throw. But then everything else, the sticks feel good. They like uh, feel a little bit looser than the Xbox One. These on the Stadia are really loose. So I would say this is least resistance, least resistance, second least, and then the Switch Pro, and then the Xbox has the most resistance. Yeah, this one feels a bit sloppy, but then everything else here feels like just right, even though you can feel a difference in them. Yeah, I think this is a solid controller, and uh, it's $50. I don't believe that this supports gyroscopic controls, so that's, uh, you know, different from the Pro Controller. But the Pro Controller is meaningfully more expensive than the rest. Uh, the Xbox controller is typically $60, give or take. Uh, well, commonly more expensive to get a fancy edition, but the base controller is $60. Uh, and I would say that this has more functionality built in but it's not like the Xbox controller isn't always on sale anyway. So uh, I would say this is a decent value controller if you're in the mood for an Xbox controller and don't want to wait for that price. But of course, this doesn't work on the Xbox One, right? But if you're on PC or you're mobile, then uh, this is a good alternative solution. 
I haven't tried any of the Alexa stuff because I don't have a Fire TV, uh, here at least, or at least not a newer generation one. But pretty solid guy. It feels nice. Definitely does feel nice. Uh, they got the basics right. Whereas on this, it's just like, it doesn't feel right on the Stadia controller. Like this D-pad, though solidly clicky, just doesn't feel. I can't really... Uh, Put together some objective words here but although it has confidence in its movement there's just something about the nature of its quality that doesn't feel quite right oh right so the divot so the curvature here so the xbox one controller has a deep ish uh dip in the center of it so that you can center your thumb real easily this one has like a multi-stage curvature where there's a tiny deeper part here where you can confidently find the center, but then the rest of it isn't really curved. The Nintendo pad is feels like straight diagonals going down, but you can feel the edges really well. But what's really interesting here on the Amazon pad is the directional notches are actually carved inwards. So as you're moving your thumb around, you can feel that you're on one of the, the directions, the wings. I don't know if it's a good or a negative thing because my thumb can't tell if it's a vertical line or a sideways line. And I don't know if I care to feel in my thumb that I am touching one of the edges. But this... Uh, because of both the curvature of the dip inside of the center of the D-pad, as well as the ability to feel the directions, really helps you center your thumb. So even if you can't tell which side, up, down, left, right, you're on, you can tell, am I touching an edge or am I touching a center, based on what you feel underneath your uh, thumb. All right. Amazon Luna controller. Pretty nice. The service itself, I've tried it for a little bit. The image quality right now is stuck to like a medium setting. So image is a bit fuzzy and it doesn't seem like the graphics themselves are at a particularly high level for the version of the game that they're sending you. The latency, uh, I would say it's, it's okay. It's not as good as the, well, it's around on par as the Stadia and GeForce Now. And uh, what's the other one? Uh, oh, Luna is the other one. So I'd say those are roughly the same. But uh, I have had times where it's dropping frames and and both video and audio frames. So it can feel perceptibly stuttery, but it's been mostly good during my tests, especially if you're on a wired connection rather than a wireless. Uh, Xbox, uh, xCloud really needs a lot of work, but I'm sure that because of Microsoft's corporate push towards... Uh, cloud services, they'll get there eventually, I trust them. And then I tried the uh, the control uh, streaming version through the Switch and that thing, the uh, picture quality is a bit blurry, uh, but the latency, you can really feel it. It feels like twice the latency of the Luna and Stadia and GeForce Now. Uh, I don't think it's as bad as PS Now or xCloud. I think you might be able to adapt, but you really, really, really feel it uh, compared to these services. Yeah, 